everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to my channel. My name is Tahaf De Belema and you are welcome to today's tutorial. So I want to say if you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much. And if this is your first time of coming across this channel or this video, I'd like to appeal to you to please subscribe to this channel. We have lots of valuable content. So today's class will be talking about the sewing machine, the parts of it. This is the second part of a two-part introduction to sewing class. And today we'll be talking about, uh, definitely if you want to start sewing, like uh, even if I mentioned that it's good, you always start with your thread and your needle, as in, so you should start with that, but one of the first things you'll be thinking of purchasing is a sewing machine, and I believe the first thing you should be getting is a domestic sewing machine. Now, the good thing about these things nowadays is that they come in various look um from the different companies produce them so they all look different but the function remains the same and most of them the good thing about most of them is that they can sew virtually anything all you need to do is change the needle and that thing so and um, they come with decorative stitches and all, most of them can equally fix your button holes so what we are going to do i think when you start um when you when you start your sewing journey it's always good you know your sewing machine be able to identify the parts and what they are used for that way in case you have an issue with your sewing machine sometimes you have issues you think it's one very um, serious thing you get an engineer and they bill you ridiculous prices but if you understand the parts of the sewing machine their function and and you're able to understand the parts of the sewing machine and their function i think it will be easy for you to handle little issues in a timely manner so um this is what i have here this is a butterfly sewing machine i got it off Jumia, and when i got it i think i got it about 36k plus shipping so but nowadays they are that, that was when nigeria was good actually so um now <laughs> now it's um i don't know what the current price is but you should go there and check but there are lots of people i think i see lots of people over on instagram selling domestic sewing machines i think some of them are new some of them are second hand but the good thing about them that even if you get the one of that second hand they're actually of very good quality so um, i'm going to be showing the sewing machine i'm going to show be showing the parts of the sewing machine that you should know what they are used for and how to, their function so um i'll adjust the camera so we'll look at them and the funny thing is that most of the sewing machine even with the industrial sewing machine the parts are usually the same Though the design of the sewing machine might be different, but the parts for all domestic sewing machines, they, their functions are the same. Even with the industrial um, sewing machines, what I would do is that, though I'm going to record me just showing you the parts of this one, but when I'm editing, I'm going to attach the um, parts of an industrial sewing machine. All, all this is just maybe to reduce the recording time. So, um... So what I will do now, I'll, so I'll just adjust the camera, then we would go through the parts of a sewing machine. And so that is what we are going to do. So please just take note and though you are going to start sewing first with the needle, but you should be able to identify the parts of your sewing machine and their functions. Using this particular sewing machine, if you look at this, these are the different stitches you get on this sewing machine. These ones are used for creating button holes. While these ones are the normal stitches you use, you have the zigzag stitches and these are decorative stitches depending on the project you want to work on. So this is kind of like the stitch sele selector. But we have a, by the side here, we have a dial, a wheel that is used to select the stitches. Like if you go, if you look here, like I told you, all of them have different designs. All the sewing machines that are made, they have different designs. but generally the functions are usually the same like if you look through this glass here that this thing that looks like a magnifying glass as you're moving it the stitches you're changing stitches so this is the stitch, stitch selector lever so you use it to push it down here is the reverse stitch like you know when you're sewing and you want to lock the stitch that you've been sewing and you've gotten to the end of your seam line you know you wouldn't just cut the thread and leave it like that you need to lock that seam line so this is the one that you used to lock it you press it down press it down if you're coming forward you press it down it goes back so it's called the stitch selector lever then this is the spool pin to hold your spool your threads you place your thread on it so it does have a cap to ensure that the thread 
does not jump out because you know there are sometimes you can be sewing and the threads are coming out. This also functions as a spool pin. This is detachable. So it's detachable. So then this is the bobbin winder. It's used to um reel your um wind the threads on your bobbin. This is your bobbin winder and you have to let's say if you're sewing and you run out of thread in your bobbin. This is your bobbin. This is your bobbin. You place it here and push it backward. I don't know how the design for that sewing machine is, but if you you're going to go because this is quite easy, it's not complicated at all. So you push it back and you just step on your pedal, it starts winding the bobbin and putting threads on it then we have the tension thread tension dial thread tension that that's to say how tight your thread is going to be now personally i'm someone that i don't like you know if you're using the industrial sewing machine when you're choosing your stitch selector you have from one to five i'm someone that i work like i told you i always work with um, number 14 needle and i always use number i think between three and four is the best stitch for me because of course number five is what most people use for gathers then the other ones one two and yeah one and two to me it's too tiny but eventually you need to loosen that same line i think that you you have to you might not if because the stitches are too tight you might rip your fabric so i usually prefer to work with um, three but for this sewing machine as far as I can remember I've always worked with two two has been the perfect stitch length for me so that is it then under here we have the needle clamp if you loosen this your needle falls out it has like a little flat head screw which you can tighten or loosen this needle refer this is the needle this is the needle and you need to why you need to learn how to do because sometimes when you're new if you don't know the parts of your sewing machine and their function you might just start using them before you know the threads could get stuck into the um, bobbin carrier the shuttle the shuttle carrier it could get stuck here it could and you get confused so most of the times if you know what is used for like the thread needle it's important that i don't know how you can see that but it's important that you know the correct positioning for your needle this is the needle clamp this is the presser foot the presser foot holds your fabric in place when you're sewing now this other one with the zigzag teeth is called the feed dog it's called the feed dog it holds your it goes when you're sewing it goes up and down moves the fabric either forward or backward holding it in place while this presses stays on the fabric this is your shuttle this is the, the shuttle carries your bobbin it's this is what feeds your thread feeds the thread from the under the sewing machine and not sit with the thread that comes from the top from the um, spool pin so you know when you're sewing you have a seam line running under the outfit and another seam line running above it the thread that comes from the top is the one that runs above the thread that comes from under the sewing under the feed dog or the presser foot or the feed plate this is called the feed plate that is the one that is running under the the fabric you're sewing now whichever way you know as they are running on a straight line one will need to one will need to tighten the other so this shuttle feeds thread from the bobbin this is the bobbin feeds the thread and not sit with the one on top so that is what it does and this is your bed now this is a flat bed attachment for this sewing machine it contains our accessories it contains the accessories for the sewing machine and this is this particular one is used for creating is the foot for buttonholes this machine comes with that and this is for smaller buttonholes you just fix it into this and you now start creating your smaller buttonholes that is further down in the class when we are handling other things, I'll show you how we create buttonholes with this sewing machine. So you have your, um, you have this, you have other extra 
bobbins inside there. So it's just used as to carry, and it comes with sewing machine comes with a sewing ripper also. So those are this is your balance wheel. This is your balance wheel. In for the I, the old um, domestic sewing machine, that's the one that used to be black. All those original butterflies, remember that round hand. So this is it. This is it. This is your balance wheel or hand um, wheel. So this one moves your machine. You see as I'm moving it, it's moving the needle up and down. So this is your balance wheel. This is your stitch selector. Here you can see the stitches you're selecting. Your reverse wheel. This is your bobbin winder. These are the basic things. And these are the basic things you need to know. You place your thread here or you place your thread here to hold your thread spool. This is your tension thread tension regulator here. So now another interesting thing you need to know because of I told you that the designs of most of the sewing machines are different, but it would be of interest to you because you need to learn how to thread this kind of sewing machine. I know that most people will not have the butterfly because the butterfly is not a very popular brand when it comes to domestic sewing machines. I usually see Brother, I see Janome and some other ones that most of these um, Instagram vendors sell, but I've rarely come across this. So, so if I knew that so many people were going to be using, maybe I'll show you how to thread this one. But whatever sewing machine you have, I believe you will need to specially learn how to thread it because sometimes the threading will determine if the outfit is going to sew or it's not going to sew. Because if you thread it wrongly, it's not going to sew. So, these are the basic parts of I'm sure there are other parts, these are the parts that you see. Oh, yeah, this one has like a blade when you sew where you can cut the thread the extra thread from it so you have to this is these are the basic parts of the sewing machine you need to know so comment um in the comment section please leave a comment in the comment section if you think there are parts of the sewing machine that i missed out that i needed to talk about but looking at this sewing machine like i told you this butterfly is quite easy to understand and it's easy to use this is the bobbin winder this is the spool pin thread tension regulator this is this is the tension for this little one here is the tension for when you are winding you're using the bobbin winder so this is our needle clamp on the lid here this is our needle this is a, a presser foot you know we have different types of presser foot we have presser foot like this is just for normal sewing we have a presser foot i showed you the presser foot that we have for sewing button holes we have presser foot for sewing um zips we have presser foot for sewing gathers we have lots and lots of presser foot we have presser foot for um chiffon chiffon fabric as in silky fabrics to hem the edges so there are lots of presser foot then this is the feed dog that feeds um, the fabric or fits the fabric to the needle it goes up and down forward and back while you are sewing this is the feed plate and this is the bed this is the flat bed attachment that contains like a little compartment where you can put your machine accessories okay so um we are done with the parts of the sewing machine in case i i'm sure there might be some parts that you may think or maybe there are some extra parts in your own sewing machine that is not on the sewing machine but just if you've just gotten the sewing machine maybe you could try practicing at home to identify the parts and knowing their functions so um in case and up so in case you think there's any part i missed out please leave a comment in the comment section so that will be all we are for today's class which is the parts of a sewing machine i hope you find you found value in this um, tutorial today so if you found any value please give the video a thumbs up and like i said before if you are yet to subscribe to the channel please subscribe to my channel that will help uh, um, our channel growth so um, i would really appreciate it also so please subscribe to the channel if you are yet to subscribe and if you're a returning subscriber thank you very much and that will be all till the next class keep sewing and just keep studying <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.